Albion. In the time long before man first discovered the secret of fire, millennia before the first elf learned the art of the bow, a race known only as the Old Ones forged the world. Legends tell of how they manipulated the ebb and flow of magic to mold the land to their will, and of how they sowed the seeds that would form into the vast forests that cover the world. The races of elves, dwarfs, and men were like children to them, whom they nurtured and taught. It is said that even the great dragons were mere playthings to these godlike beings. In time, the Old Ones chose the island of Albion as one of the locations to build their homes. Little is known of their settlements, for few ever visited Albion, let alone return from this mysterious place. They forged an island paradise, where the sun shone bright and the crops flourished, gathering together the wisest and bravest individuals of each race. They taught them magic and other skills. They demonstrated the secret of forging runes to the dwarfs, and to the elves they taught the mastery of spellcasting. The old ones believed that the race they called man was too primitive to learn, but were quickly surprised at the speed mankind adapted to his surroundings. They were so impressed that they chose to teach a select few of the cave-dwelling tribesmen some of their secrets. Those they taught went by the name of truth-sayers, for it was their duty to teach the other tribesmen the true path to enlightenment. They instructed their students to spread across the world and populate the continents. Whilst all the time the Old Ones kept a watchful eye over their subjects, they in turn were worshipped as gods, and temples were erected in their honour. The race of man impressed the Old Ones the most, for he seemed to be able to adapt to any climate, and small tribes quickly flourished in every corner of the world. Carvings upon Slan pyramid temples found deep within the jungles of Lustria, and the earliest songs of the High Elf bards tell of a great disaster that befell the noble Old Ones. A magical gateway, their portal to other distant worlds, collapsed, and they were forced to flee the fledgling world that they had created, lest they become stranded. Unable to help those races they had brought into the world, the Old Ones had little choice but to leave them to fend for themselves. Their parting gift was to create a race of giant warriors to protect the people of Albion. The collapse of the gateway tore a great hole in the fabric of the heavens, allowing the forces of chaos to pour into the world. As the chaos mists enveloped the land, hordes of gibbering demons and all manner of foul beasts descended from the north in a bloody rampage. Many of the wise slan, the highest servants of the old ones, were the first to fall. A brave race, they tried to fight off the first wave of attackers, but were too few and too weak. They fled into hiding within the dense jungles of Lustria. Next, the Chaos Hordes turned their attention to the High Elves, but the Old Ones had taught their children well. The High Elves constructed a vortex at the centre of the heart of Ulfwan to contain and drive back the Dark Mists. The mages of the elves created this vortex by building a series of stone circles to absorb and diffuse the chaos energy. In their arrogance, the high elves thought they alone were the saviors of the world, but it was not so. By concentrating that attack on Ulthwan and leaving the Isle of Albion, the chaos hordes made a fatal flaw in their plan of conquest. The truthsayers, or druids as they were called by the people of Albion, gathered together the giants and bade them also to construct a series of stone circles. 
with such immense strength at their disposal, the truth sayers soon had a great many of these circles, whose mystical properties would allow them to channel their spells and bind the forces of chaos to the north. In many ways, their mastery of this form of magic was better than that of the elves. Not only were they able to contain the chaos mists, but they were also able to use the stones to weave their own veil of fog around their island, protecting what they called the Ogham Stones from danger. The elves would certainly have been overrun had the druids of Albion not stemmed the flow. But the mists that shrouded the isle also blocked out the sun. Something in the nature of the stone circles attracted rain and storms, and over a short period of time, the fertile land of Albion became a boggy region where few crops grew. In absorbing much of the chaos energy, the soil of Albion became tainted, and once fertile fields quickly changed into quagmires where a man could sink without trace. The thick woods and forests became wild places where hawthorn and poisonous plants choked the life from the trees. Many feared to enter these once beautiful glades, and many of those who did were never seen again. Even the creatures of Albion were not able to escape the mutating effects of chaos, and after only a short period of time, the tribe's folk told tales of terrible monsters lurking in the darkest reaches, emerging at night to prey upon the unweary. It was a price the truth says had little choice but to pay. If the dark forces of chaos were to be contained, then Albion had to remain hidden. The truth sayers gave the task of guarding these stone circles to the giants who had constructed them, said to have been formed. From the earth itself, these giants were highly intelligent beings and knew the importance of their vigilance. For a while, stability was created. The High Elves flourished as a race, learning much of the world through their contact with other more primitive races, such as the Dwarfs and Man. The truth-sayers of Albion, on the other hand, were isolated. They preferred the safety of their remote isle to the danger of the outside world, and became introverted and reclusive. The giants also suffered from their imposed isolation. Centuries of inbreeding dulled their minds. When the danger of chaos vanished, they became bored and restless and resorted to mindless displays of strength in order to pass away the time. The tribes of men on the island also suffered a similar fate. With the disappearance of the Old Ones and a distinct lack of contact with the outside world, they degenerated into a race of warring tribesmen and primitive cave dwellers. During all this time, the truth sayers continued to teach a chosen few of each successive generation their secret magic, waiting for the day when their masters would return. Each truth-sayer would be taught in minute detail the ritual ceremonies that were needed to maintain the mists that enveloped their island. They would each learn of the nature of the stones and the offerings that must be made so that the magical power of these circles never waned. Over time, though, the ancient laws were slowly forgotten. And although the truth sayers still practiced their art, it was but a shadow compared to the powers that used to be at their command. Some practices still survive, though, and on the night of each full moon, the truth sayers would gather and perform ceremonies in order that the mystical energies stayed bound to the stones. So it came to be that Albion remained a mysterious island. Many tales tell of raiding ships that have vanished into the mists, never to be seen again. 
Occasionally, the gossip in a tavern will turn to the tale of a friend of a friend who was shipwrecked on the isle and returned to tell stories of creatures that were half horse, half man, or of terrible one-eyed beasts that stalked the mists. Some even claim to return with riches beyond a man's wildest dreams. No truth to these stories has ever been proven. The rumours of Albion remain little more than fantastic tales told by drunks to any who would listen. But now, a new legend has spread across the land. Sailors talk of an island which has suddenly appeared to the far north. Huge white cliffs loom out from the sea, but the sailors have also spied beaches where a small boat may possibly make a landing. It would seem that the mists have parted and the land lies open to explore. For every race across the world is gathering its armies to seek the treasures of Albion and claim the island as their own. Even more disturbing are the rumours of dark strangers who have been traversing the length and breadth of the world. They talk of a dark master, one who will lead the strong to conquer the weak. Of these dark emissaries, as they have become named, little is known. People talk of sinister magics at work, and where they walk, death follows. Of the Dark Master, nothing is known, save for the fact that he has called his followers to join him at Albion. Only time will tell of the secrets that will undoubtedly be revealed. The Dark Master A dark shadow is spreading across the world. An evil presence has awoken and seeks to enslave each and every race to its malicious will. Dark emissaries stalk the land, offering their services to any who would join their cause. They whisper rewards of untold power and wealth to those who will fight for the Dark Master. Of this mysterious lord, little is known. But these emissaries have allied themselves with the forces of chaos and darkness. They rouse all those with malice-filled hearts to march unto war. How many of these dark emissaries have spread the seed of corruption in the old world? None can say. But the people speak in hushed whispers of their passing and of the terrible magics they possess. Few have dared to challenge these sorcerers, and those who have perished before they had the chance to regret their folly. Hordes of goblins and orcs have been seen rampaging down from the world's edge mountains. Not since the time of Morglum Necksnapper have greenskins gathered in such numbers. Together, they march to war, laying claim to the distant Isle of Albion and challenging any who say otherwise. The Great Horde is not the only threat poised to strike the old world. Sightings of the dreaded Black Arcs have become more frequent. Rumours have even spread that flights of black dragons have been spied soaring high above the clouds, and Malekith the Witch King has been seen abroad once more. It is rumoured that he has turned his attention towards Albion in the hope that its hidden treasures will lend him the power to destroy his most hated enemies, the High Elves. Once again, the dead have risen from their perfect slumber and gather together in a fearsome, unholy union of death. Some even talk of terrible man-sized rats crawling out from the sewers in vast numbers. Each witness speaks of different horrors, but all who have spied these dreadful hordes say that they march northwards. It would seem that the Isle of Albion is their destination. 
All eyes turn upon this mysterious place, as the mists part and its secrets are revealed for those who dare venture past the storm-battered beaches. All is not lost, though, for even as the dark emissaries spread disorder across the face of the world, a beacon of light shines forth, calling for those who are good of heart and true to the cause of righteousness to rally together. A mystical race of warrior wizards known only as the Truth Sayers have braved the perilous crossing over the sea of chaos to seek out noble civilizations. They foretell of great danger should their homeworld of Albion fall. The forces that bind the chaos mists to the northern realms will weaken, and in so doing so, demon armies will be able to descend upon the world. To those who will help protect the Isle, they promise to teach secrets lost to civilization since the disappearance of the old ones. Magic weapons and artifacts thought long vanished from the world will be given to those who the truth sayers deem worthy. But time is of the utmost importance. The elves of Ulfuan have pledged their allegiance to the cause, and already the truth sayers are sailing aboard the high elf fleets. Soon they will make landfall on the coast of Albion. Also, the Elector Counts have gathered in council, and after a surprisingly close vote, have also agreed to provide support, though there are those who refuse to lend their forces. The Knights of Britonia have formed a crusade, and are speedily heading north, where they will embark on the perilous sea crossing. Word has spread that a vast dwarf throng, lured by the rumour of hidden treasure, have boarded their ironclad steamships and set sail from the hold of Barakvar. It would seem that the troopsayers have managed to spread the word of warning far and wide across the world. Even the elusive lizardmen have been spied marching forth, their divination of the constellations forewarning them of the peril. Though none have spied any fleets on which they could have made their long journey, a number of armies have been seen crossing through the lands of the Empire, and others report that they are already on Albion in numbers. The marshes and fens are ideally suited to them, only time will tell whether the chill climate will affect their cold-blooded nature. With the possibility of discovering a link to their distant past, perhaps they of all the races have the strongest interest in the Isle. The truth sayers warn the leaders of every army to prepare their soldiers for the harsh climate that will face them as they march upon Albion. The potent raw chaos energy which has been absorbed by the earth of Albion creates highly unstable weather conditions. Albion is constantly bombarded by heavy rain and lashing gales, which has led to the ground becoming boggy and infertile to all but the hardiest of plants. The rumble of thunder has become an everyday sound. The torrential rain whips the face of all who walk the land. Some parts of the island are so wet that they have become deep quagmires, where any who wander off the muddy path soon sink without trace. The dense mists that have parted from the coast are still thickly concentrated at the centre of the island. And it is all too easy for individuals to become separated from their comrades and wander blindly into one of the treacherous marshes. These same mists hide a myriad of fearsome beasts, ready to strike at any who pass by before vanishing back to their lairs. Although a relatively flat land, the coast of Albion is rugged, and the great white cliffs that surround the island tower high into the sky. The waters of Albion teem with a vast array of hideous sea beasts, some of which are fully capable of pulling even the large galleys to a watery tomb. Landing places are few, 
and those beaches which do reach down to the turbulent storm-lashed waters are difficult to find, let alone land upon. Jagged rocks rise out from the water, but it is the rocks that lie hidden beneath the foaming sea that pose the greatest threat. They will tear through the hull of a boat as easy as a dwarf axe cleaves through a goblin's neck. Many of the giants that were created to guard the Ogham stones enjoy nothing more than to stand at the top of these cliffs and launch great boulders down onto any ship that tries to land. The sight of one of these giants is often enough to ward away would-be treasure hunters. The giants are very protective of the land and attack all intruders who set foot in their realm. Only the tribes of primitive cave dwellers have gained the giants' trust, and they too are a territorial race. What exactly they fight to protect is unknown, but the arrival of other more advanced races on Albion signals a very real threat to their way of life, which has remained unchanged for millennia. The legacy of the Old Ones still remains strong on Albion. Something deep within the ancient nature of the Ogham Stone Circles intensifies the power of magic and makes the Isle a powerful vortex for magical energy. There are many of these mysterious circles located across Albion. The winds of magic blow with the strength of gales across the island, causing havoc amongst the mages who are exploring the land. Spells that are supposed to simply light a campfire become deadly fireballs, whilst the most powerful sorcerous blasts might merely spark and fade from the caster's fingertips. Possession of the Ogham Stones is the key to capturing Albion, but it will not prove easy. Each race knows of their importance and will attempt to wrest the stones from those who are currently in possession of them. For those that succeed, power, beyond any other that has existed on the world, will be theirs to control, and the fens and moors of Albion will be the lonely resting places for those that fall. The fate of the world is in the hands of the generals and commanders of the armies who have come to this isle, and only one race will win. The call to arms has finally... The call to arms has truly begun. Thanks very much for watching everybody. Please do remember to give this video a like and subscribe if you're not subscribed and I will see you again next time. You can see a list here of all the, the champions of humanity who are supporting the channel. Thank you very much lads, I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again next time. Cheers.